last tube. Um, this is just a few days later after my last video. Didn't think it was going to be this quick. Um, I find it kind of funny. I was wearing a tank top in the last video and that's why I'm wearing a sweatshirt. And that's because I live in Ohio and the weather here is very bipolar. <laughs> it was like 75 degrees the other day and now it's like, I don't know, 40 something um, Fahrenheit. <laughs> so yay Ohio weather. But today I thought I would do a basically a Teresa Wensler collection parade. That's what you guys call those videos, right? Yeah, I thought so. Um, also, I'm wearing my glasses today. Sorry for the glare. My I, I like to let my eyes rest from the contacts every now and then. That and I was binge watching some um, videos the other day. I started watching The Discovery of Witches and uh, I was on an Avengers kick. I wanted to watch the Avengers series again. So uh, spending a lot of time watching the TV, I don't like using my mono vision with the contacts then because only one eye has the right script for seeing long distance so it kind of messes with my head a little bit gives me some headaches and stuff so i had taken my contacts out and just put my glasses in for that and now i'm just giving them a little little rest period so yeah i'm not a huge fan of my glasses but you know just thought i'd explain why they're on my face right now so anyways Teresa Wensler, I started stitching her, I think it was, it was right around the millennium time. Um, I'm not sure if it was 98 or 99. One of those years, I'm, again, I'm not sure which, definitely 99 for sure. So let's just say 99. And um, when I started stitching, at first I just bought stuff at like Joann's, you know, the obvious craft stores. Um, also around that time, the internet was just starting to become like a thing. Though it was still back in the day of dial up and slow, slow to load. There were no videos online. If there was a bunch of pictures, the page took forever to load and things like that. So, um, which is, you know, pertinent. And I'll explain why in a minute here. But, anyways, uh, I went to, with my mom, we started going to some LNSs, which that like really broadened my stitching horizons. Um, this girl back here was one of the first things that I picked up at an LNS and I grabbed the fabric and all that and the pattern and the treasures and whatnot and I started using a scroll frame. I think I bought that from Joann's, you know, so this was like, oh my gosh, you know, I felt like I had really become a fancy stitcher <laughs> instead of just like using a hoop and Ada and whatnot, you know, I was feeling fancy. So uh, I go to the LNS and this one was the one local in my town where I got that. And my mom was a big quilter and she was all, let's go, you know, to pretty much the next town over, go to a bigger LNS. And this LNS was the Daisy Barrel in Fairborn, which sadly is no longer there, but some of you might remember it because it was half cross stitch and half quilting. So that's how it was on my mom's radar. She was more of a quilter than a cross stitcher, even though she did do a little bit of cross stitch. But so we went to that store. And um, after I'd picked up the mermaid, you know, I was just kind of going through things that I wanted to stitch. And for some reason, I really had it in that I wanted to stitch a peacock. And I didn't want it to look, you know, cuby. I didn't want something little. I wanted something big. And so we went into Daisy Barrel and told her, I'm looking for a peacock design. And she's like, oh, well, hang on. So she went back and she brought me this. And I about died. I was like, oh, my God that's amazing whereas my mom she's all like look at that floss list oh my god but yeah so there there's the floss list very very huge which I was like I don't care this looks awesome I'm gonna do that you know and she's like look how many pages that is and I was like yeah that's cool with me <laughs> you know which she wasn't as much of a cross stitcher so of course you know big project like that she'd be like I ain't gonna you know sit there and do that the whole time so um, but this is the actual first chart I got. It's got the Daisy Barrel sticker on it, uh, retail price, and I was just like, the clouds parted and the angels sang, and I took this home and I started like looking at it, and you know, she's got all of her other designs listed on here. So I got on the rusty old internet and started looking for more, and fell into the world of Teresa Wensler. She had her website at that point and she had a link to her bulletin board, which, gosh, I can't remember which engine it was on at that time. It's not the one that it's on now, but it was like an older one. And it was where I found the most resources for all of her designs. And so I started like wanting to get more of her designs because I really liked her style. And so I had like this short list of her designs that I really wanted to get. And it was funny because back then, like, 
She was producing new patterns still at this time, but some of her older patterns were out of print. So some of the ones that I wanted were out of print. Well, this is before the internet was really very useful. You know, like eBay was kind of in its fetus stages, I guess you'd say. And um, so we went to his other LNS and I can't remember the name of it, but I remember it was like, kind of looked like, I don't know if you've ever been in a comic book store, but it's got all these boxes and you just kind of have to leaf through all the boxes to find stuff. And Sometimes it was organized by subject, sometimes it was organized by designer or um, publisher. And one of the ones I was really looking for was this one, and this is the actual chart that I bought. So this was the first time when I was searching for Teresa Wensler designs and I scored one. And I was so happy that it was this one because I loved that it was on black fabric. Just funny, I just finished this design last year. I should have finished it earlier, but... I was so happy when I found this and this was my first like woohoo I found one you know and got that little thrill of finding an out of print pattern. I will say um, if you are doing this design get the newer one <laughs> because this is a hand drawn chart and this is a computer generated chart and this one is much clearer so definitely go with this version. Um, when I started this one I made my floss list with this. And then I decided to use this pattern, but some of the symbols were a little bit different. So I had to change my Loran floss cards, um, which if you don't know, if you're not a Teresa Wensler stitcher, you need these things to stitch her designs so you can pre-sort the blends. They make your life so much easier. But anyway, since I started with this chart and went on with this one, I had to modify it a little bit. So do it with the new new chart you can also i think get this online at petters online if you want i'm a hard chart person though for the most part so anyways those are the very first ones that i got and now let's go through my stash so here's the fantasy collection the first one um, i bought this as soon as it came out these are all the patterns that are on it um, i do like most of them oh and um or is it day and night or two that I was really seriously hunting down? I remember I found both of these, but then like when I started um, going on the decline for um, cross stitch, I ended up selling these two charts since I have them in here. Anyways, that, is this computer generated? Yeah, this one's computer generated, so it's gonna be easier to read anyway. So um, I think I ended up rebuying these charts though, just because for nostalgia's sake, I still wanted them. So that's that book, and that book is good. The things that are printed in them, they all look really good. The unicorn that's in here is computer printed too, so if you wanted the unicorn and you have this chart, or if you're just looking for this book, you know, this is a good chart for that one too. Unicorn's pretty easy to find though, I think. This one's not so easy to find. This is the second book. I actually purchased this when I came back to cross stitching. I found a website in Australia or New Zealand, was it New Zealand? One of those two. And uh, so I found the chart here. Now I will say this, the charts in this book, some of them are not very good. My main concern is with Enchanter because this is the only place I have Enchanter. And the printing is okay what's not okay so much is the back stitching a lot of times you can't even distinguish where the back stitching goes like when it goes on top of the grid line you know usually it's a little bit bolder it just kind of vanishes so i mean i guess you could maybe message leisure arts and see if you can get a separate uh, back stitch chart but this is an out of print design you might be out of luck so i'm actually thinking of maybe just buying this kit you know and having a, a decent chart because i did have the kit once and then I sold it to someone that really wanted to do it because I was like, I'm not going to do it for a while. But um, Also, which chart? The Guardian, the cover one. <laughs> I'm really apprehensive looking at that chart too because this chart suffers from like a lot of the symbols are off center and sometimes they run into each other even depending on what the symbol is. And then the quarter stitches, oh, those are a mess. So I'm going to have a lot of fun reading that chart, especially with all this, you know, Celtic knot work in the border. I do intend to do this one someday, though, so it's good to have, but if you have all these designs except for Enchanter, just look for the Enchanter kit, because it's going to be better than this book. That and this book is going pretty pricey nowadays, so. The next book is the Sampler book. I bought this mainly because, um... I had, a, I, I wanted the, the birth announcement because I bought the kit 
did it for my first child, want to do it for the second child, but I, I had gotten rid of the pattern. I had sold it to someone. Also, I, I kind of like this one, this Christmas sampler. Um, and then I also really wanted, um, <laughs> this is going to sound silly. I wanted this chart, but I only want to stitch the swans right there. So, you know, I had a bunch of the other ones, but I really wanted to do the swans there. So I thought, well, I'll just buy this. I found this like at about retail price anyways. So I thought, well, I'll just buy this and then I'll get the swans in here. So that's what I did with that. Here's the Egyptian sampler. This one I have as a work in progress. Um, I'll finish it someday. This one's kind of hard to find. This is the fruit and floral wreaths. I really like the summer wreath. Which one is it? It's this one right here. I like, I like that one. I don't know if I'll do it anytime soon, but someday I, I would like to do the summer one. This one I only bought for the border. I am not Christian. The poem doesn't mean anything to me, but I like the fish border. So that's the main reason I got this set and I found it fairly, fairly cheap, like pretty much cover price. This one I also bought because it was cheap. And when I, if I ever do this, I fancy doing it as, you know, the four sides and making like a cushion. But instead of um, doing the blue or the red, I'd like to do a purple and change the golds to silvers. So that's, that's kind of my thoughts on that. 12 Days of Christmas. Got this design. Mainly I like the turtle doves, the swan. What else did I like? Kind of like the goose. I like the animals mostly, but I really like the uh, the turtle dove. I thought that was really cute. So got that one. Again, I'm not Christian or anything, but I do. I like some of the patterns, like the swan. I think is pretty. Three Swenslers Mermaid. Now I will say this one is in the other book, um, and there have been a lot of like errors, like posted on Facebook for the chart that's in. Um, the big book, this one is a little more accurate. The only problem is it's a big fold out chart. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. You would definitely want to make some, some pretty much printed out, you know, working copies for this one. Um, I finished stitching her using this chart um, and then sold the design or the, or the finished project. So eventually I'll probably redo her, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do her border. I kind of fancy doing the border with um, the fish from Footprints because I, I like that border better. The, uh, the shells, like, I don't know, they just, I, I never really cared too much for it. I mean, it's pretty, but I don't know. I don't like all the pink and the gold. I don't, I don't know. It's just something about it. Here's the Rocking Horses. This is one I recently got, recent as in a few, past few months or so. And I wanted the Rocking Horses, but I wanted them all in one, one chart. So I just kind of kept my eye out for this one. I managed to find it fairly reasonable. These guys can go expensive for this all-in-one. Uh, these are available in individual leaflets, but I didn't want to have to hunt down them all. I just wanted the one with them all in it, you know, like they're small. If someone has a kid or something, you want to stitch them something, that'd be a good thing to do. This one's also kind of hard to find cheap. I mean, if you really want this one or any of these horses here, particularly the winter one, I guess that one's a little harder to find. It is in the Christmas book, I guess. Um, but I don't think this one's on patterns online because it's in the book or something and something about the copyright I don't know but um, this one you can find if you're willing to pay like a hundred bucks for this but if you're patient you can eventually find it for much less than a hundred dollars which is why I have this copy I don't see myself doing a horse soon but I like them enough to do them someday this one I kind of laugh a little bit um, when I quit stitching for a little bit and then I came back to it this was one that I was like, ooh, I hope I didn't get rid of that one. And I couldn't find it for the longest time and I thought I had gotten rid of it. But then I found a box that I had stored away and it had a whole bunch of charts in it. And this was one of them. And what's funny is I put this floss in here because I'd read somewhere that that color was discontinued. I don't know if it is, but it's not gone. There's plenty of it. I bought several skeins of it and every now and then when I go to the LNS or the Joann's for floss, uh, there's still plenty of it there, but hey. If they do discontinue it, I have it. So, and here's Castles by the Sea. I like this one. I like anything ocean related. I'm kind of an ocean freak. So, here's another ocean related design. This one has the dinky dye silks that you need for it in there. So, I will do that one someday. 
this one was one of those I'm not feeling a burning desire to do it but I also wanted to have it in case I do I like the beaded border you know because that gives it lots of texture this is one that was in the box that I had found I think I bought this when it came out yes this one I will do the peacock someday but I'm finishing the big peacock first might do the unicorn at some time. I don't know. I like the one on black better. That kind of suits my style a little bit better. This one I always have mixed feelings about. Like, I really like it, but sometimes I feel like there's so much stuff in there. Like, I feel like you could almost omit this whole part, you know, and it would be okay. And that's a lot of heavy stitching in there. That and, I don't know, something about her hair and the pink shawl. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll make her blonde and turn her shawl lavender colored. I don't know. We'll see. This one I would love to do. Again, it's got peacocks, but someone recently posted this on, was it Snarky or was, was it the Teresa Wentzler Facebook page? But someone changed the alphabet to a very cute quote, and I'm like, it made me like, ooh, yeah, I want to do something like that, because I'm not a big sampler person. You know, like, I like this alphabet, I like how it looks, but I like it better with the, the funny saying in there. So, but I definitely want to do it just because of the peacock set, and I, I like the fountain, and this over one gate, I think, is really cool looking. So, this one's in the sampler book, too, if you get that. <laughs> this one. Um, I'm putting up a, a video of me going through my cross-stitch scrapbook, and this one has a little relevant mention on that one there. I'll probably do it someday. Um, if you notice, a lot of these are in protective sleeves. Some of them came out really wide to where they wouldn't fit, so that's why they're not in there. Here's another one that's not in one. This is a fruit bell pull. You can find this one fairly easily, even kitted up, you know, but it's kind of hard to find just the leaflet, though. It was in a magazine, too, if you wanted to look for it that way. This one I keep meaning to do someday for my dad. A little treetop sampler. This one I'd love to do someday. Now this one I'm so torn. Like I, whenever I see close-ups, I love it to death. But then I also see people that have converted it to a red one, and I'm like, well, that's really cool too. So I, I don't know. I think I'm more of a blue person than a red, so I'll probably do it that way. But yeah, this is a really cool design. Um, this is one that I found in the box as well. The box of happiness. And here's the Four Seasons Fairies. Um, I think I had this and then I sold it or then I rebought it when I came back in because I was like I don't want to hunt down the individual charge set and I think the winter fairy like same thing with like the carousel horse like because it was in that book for some reason it's not available I don't know this one's kind of a weird one for me this is the kit for um, Millennium I actually started this design like right when it came out but I kind of stalled on it a little bit because I'm not a big like angel person especially dude angels and I had planned on redoing this quote down here to like a Metallica lyric <laughs> but I really like the planets and Mount Everest like if I could figure out a way just to do this part of the design I probably would so this one's kind of hard to find but if you're patient it turns up every now and then Lady of Shalot. The main reason I like her is because she's alone in a tower and she's got her stitching with her. <laughs> Sounds like a good place to be to me. That and I like the um, Lorraine McKent song. But here's the storyteller. This is one I do plan on doing. I am going to modify the dude though. Like I don't like his kind of bold page boy type haircut. I think I'll modify that. He's definitely going to get over one skin too. So, I like that one. I like all the Celtic cross work on it. So, yeah, and a little intermission. Let's do, um, this is a freebie of Teresa's that I did recently. Um, do I have to show up there? It's the Hummingbird. This is available on her website still now. You know, like, you can still get it because it's not a dragon. <laughs> but, um... I did modify some things. I added some, I don't know if you can see it, but I added some red blending filament to the throat and some green to the top of its head. And then the beads, they were supposed to be all gold, but I changed the ones on the flowers to red and the ones on these outside flowers to purples. Now, when I tried this, I tried using an invisible beading thread and I hated it. So, yeah. I was going to do this as like a fob, but I think it's kind of big to 
be a fob, so that's not what I'm going to do with it. And then this one, I kind of was conflicted about sharing it because I don't want people blowing me up asking for the pattern. It's one of her dragons that you can't get anymore. So sorry. If you want it bad enough, you can find it. Just trust me on that one. But I had started this one before I quit um, stitching years ago. All I had done was like a little circle there. I was planning on taking it on an airplane and stitching it there, but then I forgot it at home. So it sat forever with just this little circle stitched here. And then it was also in the box with all the other stuff that I had kept. I do plan on doing this one in different colors. This one's very sparkly and it is not showing on camera because this was like a collaboration with Krennic or something. But, and I added the, the treasure there in the middle. That wasn't called for. That was just, I thought it needed it. So yeah, don't come for me for that chart. <laughs> and then here's some more of the ones I have these in a book because they're some of the rarer ones. This is the Legends of the Dragons. This was a collaboration. Teresa did this dragon and I got this in a, as a work in progress and I'm just doing this dragon and um, using a printer and cutting up the border it was fairly easy for me to just make the border around that one dragon I was surprised it wasn't charted to where you could do them individually but it wasn't Legends of the Spellcasters same same trio of designers Teresa's is this one and if I stitch it, I will probably only do that one as well. And then this one, limited edition, you were hatched. Mine is number 170. I can't read backwards. <laughs> 170. So I had bought this when it first came out. It was $5 when it first came out. And you could get the um, places that, like Paw Prints was always the website that I went through for like uh, market releases. And you could ask for her grab this this chart for me and then she'd send it to you so that's what they had done with this one and then like I had it for a while and then they sold out um, I think even back then they were going for like $50 a copy because it's a limited edition you know and she had said like she was never going to reprint this one ever because it was supposed to be a limited edition so there's only a thousand of them plus there's a few like I don't know artist proofs or whatever so um Someone really, really wanted it though, and they had a kid that they wanted to stitch it for, so I ended up selling it. I didn't sell it for $50, I don't think, but um, I had gotten rid of mine. Well, when I came back to stitching, I was like, man, why did I do that? That was a limited edition. That, you know, collecting Teresa, you know, you want the limited edition, you know, so I started watching for it on eBay. It pops up there every now and then. I will say there is one on eBay right now, <laughs> today, which is uh, April. 10th or 11th, 2020. I mean, this is during the COVID lock and the days are kind of running together. So um, there is one online right now. Uh, it's higher than $50. So um, I paid less than $50 for mine. Luckily, I found it listed as it was starting to bid and the price had gone up to like 20 bucks or something. But then it also was best offer. So I offered $45 for it and luckily she accepted so yeah I mean $45 was about what you paid for it back when I was still doing them so I, I wasn't upset paying that for this you know and I at least have it um don't take that as you know it was worth it to me for $45 it doesn't mean you can find it for that cheap that doesn't mean like you know it's worth what you would pay for it, basically if you want to spend $100 you can find this they pop up on eBay a lot a lot of times I will watch them on eBay just so once it's ended I can see how much it went for and the last one that um, ended it ended like a week or so ago and it went for like 40 49 dollars or something like that so if you're patient and have 50 bucks you can probably find one got to watch for it though and you got to do the work for it another one this one has dragon rider in it so Dragon Rider is another, you know, dragon that you can't find since, you know, dragons are bad now apparently. But uh, if you want this bad enough, you can find it. I will suggest you search on eBay for Stitcher's World 1999 and this is the September issue. I did check before filming this video. There are several that you can get fairly cheap, you know, right now. I mean, I think I saw one for like $4.99 or something like that. So if you want this design, 
you can get this one fairly easily. Just search for the magazine, not for Teresa Wensler, because then you won't find it. Actually, a lot of her magazine designs, you need to search for the specific magazine and you can find it fairly easily. If you go on her website, you can look up all the pictures of her magazine designs. And if you see one you really like, go into eBay, plug in that, that, um, that number and the year, and usually you can find them fairly easily. So same thing with Dragon Rider. And this is one of my favorite dragons too. I love the colors in it. I stitched it, sold it, <laughs> and I'm gonna restitch it again, but I wanna do it on a funner fabric, so. And then this one, again, don't come for me. Um, I just thought I'd share it because this is my copy of Stretch. Um, it was a freebie dragon before they all got banished, but I'm sharing mine just because I, it's been signed and it was one of those market releases. So um, I had messaged um, the Paw Prince lady to grab me any Teresa freebies and at the market day she had a bunch of these hard copies and mine was signed. So I thought that was kind of cool. If you really want Stretch though, he's on the Fortunate Traveler design. Uh, do I have it handy? I know it's in here somewhere, but it's different colors, but he's on the Fortunate Traveler design. So if you really, really want stretch, you know, you can't pretty much find him now anymore. If you look for the Fortunate Traveler, there he is right there. So yeah, this is a good design to have because then you can get the stretch freebie. He doesn't have the Celtic border around him, but I've seen a lot of people stitch him without it. So if you want something bad enough, you can find it. Let's just put it that way. So anyways, that's my Teresa Wenzler's. I'm not going to dig through any of the other you know, downloads that I have or any of the other magazine designs that I have. A lot of them are kind of random anyways, but it's hard to share those without showing like the pattern. <laughs> so I don't want to have to like crop things out or anything like that, but that's basically my Teresa Wensler parade. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.